welcome to the last chapter of our Viewpoint series on sustainable finance. We have heard perspectives from across the globe and how sustainable finance is growing into a multi-trillion dollar market globally. In this last chapter, we are examining what the different actors like governments, local authorities and corporates can do to achieve the commitments under the Paris Agreement and how they can help transform the world into a low carbon economy. Carbon pricing is one of these policy tools that governments have. Carbon prices will create a link between environmental impact and economics of a company. Once you have that in place, you will see the impact of certain activities on your P&L and thereby create shareholder awareness, investor awareness and in the end management awareness for these issues. Other tools are, for instance, uh, the change of capital requirements and China has been moving into this direction quite heavily by incentivizing companies to give loans to green companies and disincentivizing other activities. Disclosure is another approach uh, which many governments have now taken. France is probably leading the space. They try to use disclosure to create the right awareness and to, over time, move portfolios of financial institutions and investors into a greener space. Uh, we've talked about governments, we've talked about regulators. Uh, obviously, there's also the corporates, the companies. What is their part to be done in uh, reaching the Paris Agreement targets? There are two very different types of actors emerging. There are new champions that take new technologies and make them global and will be successful with them. And there are existing, well-established companies that recognize that this is one of the biggest topics of their time and that they have to be ahead of the curve moving from what they do today to a much more energy efficient and greener um, type of producing and distributing their goods. And what uh, kind of companies are there? Obviously we've got the, let's say, old companies that have been around for a long time, but we've also got new players coming into the market that maybe are green players themselves. Oh, you have a l huge number of opportunities in this space. You start with renewable energy, and this is just starting. Wind, uh, solar, tidal, you name it. You have so many new technologies coming up, and suddenly they are commercially viable. They don't no longer rely on subsidies to be successful. You then go down the route of energy distribution and storage, because suddenly energy isn't at the place anymore where it used to be. It's no longer a big plant somewhere that you can use to distribute all your energy, but it's all over the place. It's distributed across the land. And then you go down to actually where energy is used. A lot of the factories will still be factories, but they have to be much more efficient in the way they use energy. And finally, consumer products will change completely because we will suddenly have everything electrified. And with things being electrified, they become connected and become so much more usable for all different purposes. Um, from the Internet of Things to big data and everything that flows uh, from there into the fourth industrial revolution. And that very nicely flows into something that we've talked about before, the climate s smart cities. And um, Canada is actually one of the places where they are very aware of how important it is to make cities climate smart. Now, are there any places where it's still, there is still a need for a bit more awareness uh, in that respect? Cities and emerging markets certainly have the biggest challenge. Um, they are growing the fastest. They are by now the largest in the world. We see a few great examples how this can be done. Chinese cities, for instance, have taken material steps in making their cities much more livable. They are uh, replacing entire taxi fleets with electric. They're moving their production lines to much higher energy standards and encouraging the population to be much more environmentally aware. With HSBC's global footprint, we see a lot of these developments and we can take learnings from one of these cities to others and we will, over time, see material changes in the emerging markets, in many cases overtaking the speed of development in the developed world. Now we've seen viewpoints from all sorts of people in this viewpoint series. Uh, what are still the, the biggest challenges and um, the biggest need for sustainable finance? I think the good news is that everybody acknowledges this, that this is important. The challenge is to make this urgent. Daniel Clear, thank you very much. Thank you.